What's up, everybody? I'm here to do my review for Animal Kingdom, episode six, season five, season five, episode six. The episode is called Home Sweet Home, and the Cody's is about to get it in and do this thing. Let's do. Let's get into it, y'all. This episode starts out at Craig's apartment, Craig's house with Ren, and he's waking up to finding out. That Ren is going to be part of this job. Ren is going to be part of this job. They're about to perform. That they're about to do for Pamela Johnson, and he's not feeling it. She's going to be the inside person. She's going to be their eyes and ears inside the indoor skate skateboard park. So he's having a problem with this. With with this because he didn't even know that she was going to be part of this job. So Smurf moves to another area where they have a little trailer that's out looking on the beach because the ocean calms Pope. And Manny and Jake help her move in. But Manny wants to know where all of this money's coming from because they're supposed to split this a certain ways. And the cut is cut shorter, but now they know that they had to get the that they had to give Jerry some of the money. So, he's all right with it now. But the weird thing is, Jake is moving in with Smurf. And he's still married, mind you. So, Craig, Darren, and Jake, hook up to get everything ready for the job they're about to do. Craig confronts Darren about him putting Ren on the job. And he basically tells her, you know, she could take care of herself. She's tougher than what you think. And assuring him that everything's going to be fine, the job's going to go smooth. He just wished that he would have came to him and told him first that they were that he was gonna do this. And he's kind of mad at him for not doing that. Now, Pope is really losing it right now. He's on the verge of harming himself. And he just wants to know, he had questions, why would Smurf bring him to meet his father right before all of this? And he didn't even know he had a dad. So he's questioning all of that. He's questioning all of that. And he's just spiraling out of control where he wants to hurt himself. And it's not a good look. He's on the, he's spiraling out of control, Pope. He's driving erratically and while driving down the road he sees a sign where are you find the truth and the sign basically brings him to attention and he sees this place and he basically gets out of his car and he goes to find out what's going on he wants to he, he's curious about it he wants to know what it's about, and if this is something that can help him. Now, Jake is watching Pope and Julie. Smurf's not there. And Pope don't really care for um Jake. He wants him to go home, basically. He doesn't like him like that. He just wants him to go to his own house. And this guy pulls up. This is Max Cross. Max Cross is in charge of the town as far as like the, the low down stuff that goes on. The, all the heist, he gets a cut. Anything that goes on in the town, he gets a cut. And he's not feeling it right now because they coming in, doing all of this stuff, and he's not getting a piece of the pie. So, basically... He's going to take it out on somebody. And that person happens to be Jake that he's going to take it out on. He gets some brass knuckles. And he 
he goes in on Jake. I mean, he goes in on Jake. And the kids are witnessing this. The kids see this going on. Max Cross tells them to go inside the house. And they listen. They, they go inside. And he basically beats the mess out of Jake. He beats him up really bad. He beats Jake up really bad and he makes sure he tells him that he needs to get Smurf under control. And he want he, he lets him know that he's in charge and if you do anything else, you got to go through me before you do anything. And he wants a cut. So basically, Jake had to take the ass whooping for Manny and Smurf too. This place that Pope stopped off at is called the Kinship of Light and Truth. So basically, it's another outdoor religious thing that he comes across. And he sees the minister. And he meets with him. And he basically welcomes him in. He welcomes him in. Open arms and... Basically, he tells them there's a lot of people that just stop by and come here. And he's welcome to join them. So he goes inside. Alright, so we get to the meetup before the Cody crew does this heist. They meet up with Pamela Johnson and her son Phoenix. And Phoenix basically tells him, look, be careful because this guy is like, really, if you get caught by this dude, it's going to be some trouble. So he lets him know that his boss is no joke and he wishes them luck and they set up another meeting spot for after the whole heist is done. So this right here is their meeting point where they meet where the job is over and done and they're gonna meet up again when the Cody crew is gonna give them the safe that they need. Now remember the safe is the safe had some a shirt that was inside of it because Phoenix murdered somebody over 20 years ago. So he's been holding this over his head for years. So they trying to get this so that way he doesn't have anything for, on them. And Phoenix seemed like a good dude, to be honest. He seems like a good dude. He just got jammed up in a in a in a in a different in a predicament where he can't rob these people. So they get somebody that doesn't know about it. And nobody else knows about that shirt but him and the guy. And the and and Pamela Johnson. So they had to get an outside crew to do this. So it's about to go down now. Ren is in place. She's in place to go inside the park to be their eyes and ears. She's online because the place is very crowded. So it's a lot of people here. So they have to be really on point with what they're about to do. She's inside the park. Jay, Darren, and Craig pull up. So the Cody crew is about to get to work on this job. And they have a employee from the skating park comes by there and tells them that they're not even supposed to be working in today because it's a demo day. And Jay smooths it out and it's like, look, I got a boss. I have rules I got to follow. They told us to come in to get this little bit of work done. And he lets them go. He lets them rock out. And he... He's like, look, you're going to make it, as long as you make it fast, you got to do what you got to do and get out of here. And he was like, okay, and then he leaves. Now, he lets them rock out. Remember, Ren is inside, so she has to make sure that nobody in that park Here's what's going on. Because they got cement sores and all of that. Because they got to cut through concrete. So, 
she has to be their eyes and ears for everything. And she's on, basically, Craig is texting her back and forth to tell her, look, turn the music up because they're going to, they're about to start using the, the cement saw. Yeah, so they got this concrete saw, I'll say it. And Ren goes to the DJ and get them to turn the music up. She gives him a little incentive and he turns it up too. Like I said, she gives him a little incentive. I don't even know. If the, is that the cocoa she giving him? <laughs> yeah, so she gives him a little incentive. He turns up the music and on her way back over to where she was standing, she bumps, she meets up with the owner, which happens to be the guy that the Cody crew is robbing. She meets up with, with the, the owner, and he looks like he's he's into her. He wants to meet her. He's telling her he owned the place and all of this, and his name is Darian, and, you know, he owns this place, and you don't, you should know me, and this and that. He's, like, trying to talk to her. And it, for, for now, this is working out. He's 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 basically showing all oh, this all of this is mine. You should know me. I'm I'm a person that you should know. Now, remember I said that they had like a demo thing going on. Now the guys are next door working trying to get through this wall to get to that safe. And that saw is a hell of a loud because it's cutting through concrete. The music's up. Nobody hears anything because you got the music, the skateboard crowd, the people there and everything. Darian's trying to talk to Ren, which she tells her, her tells him her name is Dan Danielle. And he, he, he's like, I've never seen you here before and this and that. And... Now that they're doing the demo and they're recording, they, the music is too loud because they can't hear the people talking and announcing stuff. So Darian tells the DJ to turn the music down. So Darian gets the DJ to turn the music down. He turns the music down. And not only he hears the song, Everybody hears the saw going. So he's like, hold on a minute. Let's stop. I got to find out what's going on because these people not even supposed to be working next door. They're not supposed to be working today. Let me find out what's going on. Let me handle something. I'll be right back. He runs over. He walks over there and he knocks. He bangs on the door and they send Jay to the door. To hand. He's like, okay, I'm going to handle this. And he's like. Get your stuff and get out of here. Y'all know y'all not supposed to be working today. I pay y'all not to work on the days that I'm doing stuff. And he's like, I don't care who said for you to come here. You don't come here today. You know what? Better yet, I'm going to call your boss. And not, not only is he going to fire you, you going to pack your stuff and leave. So, basically at this point, they got to get out of there. They got to get out of there. And Jay is really trying, is basically the buffer of this situation where he's telling him, okay, we're, we're leaving, we're leaving, and this and that. So Darian is basically telling them they got to pack their stuff and get out. So Jay goes back to tell Craig and Darren that the job is burnt and they got to get out of here. And Craig is all for leaving because, you know, Ren is in the uh, in, on the other side. And they got to worry about getting her out before she gets exposed. So he's like, all right, the job is burnt, saying to Craig. That Craig says to Darren, the job is burnt. We have to get out of here. And let's go. We got to go. It's burnt. And Darren is like, no, we're not leaving here because if we don't do this job, we're not going to be able to get our house. And Jay is like, let's just try to renegotiate something with her. He said, no, we're here. We're getting, our, we're getting this safe and getting out of here. I'm already through the wall. 
Now, meantime, Darian done made a phone call, but thank God he got a voicemail. So he's just leaving a message right now with the guy telling him, look, they working over here. You know, I paid you so you don't work on these days. And he leaves a message. So this buys them a little bit more time. This buys them a little bit more time where they could get things done. But now, it's really starting to get where they press for time. He's still trying to talk to Ren. They get inside and the plans is not like how the floor plans are that they saw that they saw to do the job. So now they realize they built another room and they thought they was gonna be right inside the room where the safe was, but it's another room and then an office. But they get inside there, they get inside there. They get inside this room. Now they got to figure out how they going to get this safe out with nobody seeing them. And Darren's idea is just to hoist that out the window and have the van downstairs. And they just chuck that thing in the van and pull off. So he was like, Craig is like, what? Like, this is not, this is your plan? And and he's pissed off with it now because he's, he's worried about his baby mother. So basically, that's his plan. They want to, he wants to. Break in here, steal the safe, hoist it out the window, put it in the van, and then they jet off. So now one of them got to go downstairs and get the van or whatever, you know. And in this time, now, they hear what's going on in the office. And Ren is with this dude, so now she's exposed. So now they're like, oh, you stay in here because something don't seem right. You come in and now we meeting you and this stuff. So they make they make her stay with um one of his workers and he goes back over to the place, the work area where the Cody crew was working to basically try to go in where they came through to get to get them out of there, to, to stop everything from going on, because now they realize they're being robbed. And like I said, they hoist that joker out the window. Just throw it out the window. Onto the street. Look out below. <laughs> they hoist that safe off out onto the street. And then they, now they got to, they press for time. They got to get out of here. Ren is being held by the homie. He letting them her know she not going nowhere. But that didn't work out so good for him. Cause she stabbed dude in the leg and kept it moving. So you I guess Darren was right. She could take care of herself. She stabbed homeboy in the leg. Not once but twice. She was like, yeah, yeah, and stabbed him in the leg. <laughs> They chasing the van up the block. One dude is on top of the van because he jumped out the window too. And they got to get him off the van so he don't go with them to where they going. So they get him off the van. He goes rolling down the street and his homeboy helps him. And they get out of there. They get to the rendezvous point where they got to meet with Pamela Johnson and Phoenix. And right now, it's tension between the two brothers. It's tension between Craig and it's tension between Darren. Darren is basically now, he seems like he's a loose cannon now. Because he want to he wanna make sure they keep their house. And... Craig is like, you know, you doing all of this and my girl is up in this building and we don't even know if she got out because he calling her phone and she's not answering. So he's kind of panicked. So they have a little back and forth because he's already pissed at him because he put Ren on this job and didn't tell him, didn't give him no heads up. Now the job kind of went sideways, but they got away. And 
I feel like Darren is really acting like a jerk now. He's really acting like a jerk. I understand it's for their house. But now, these two is ready to go at each other's throat. They getting ready to fight. And Jay is in the middle trying to break it up. But he's trying not to say much. Because remember, Darren already been on him because he feel like they stole from him. So he's trying to be like the cooler head out of all of this. And he and he calmly manages to defuse everything. And And this is just right now. The hashtag is living out right in this scene. Be the alpha. To me, I, I feel like Darren could be in charge, but he's not organized enough. And to me, out of the whole, out of all of them doing these jobs, the, the nephew was, the nephew was on point with everything. That's my opinion. My question to y'all, and leave it in your com in the comments. Who do you think is the best person to be in charge of the crew? My vote right now is Jay. He manipulated the situation the best to his ability to make everything go in his favor and work for him. That's how I feel about it. I feel like Craig is the muscle... Darren could be in charge as far as, like, planning the heist, but the overall thing with the cuts and getting everything um situated and how they money and washing the money and all of that, I feel like Jay is the dude for the job. That's my opinion. I, that, I feel like he's the dude for the job. He's more, respons he's more responsible because they was, they was never taught that. And now it's showing because they are sticking together, but the inner fighting that's going on between them is kind of crazy. The inner fighting is kind of crazy. Now we get to Ren. She got a rush from doing this job. She got a rush from stabbing that dude. She got a rush. She got a rush. She likes this. This is... She likes this, and she want, it seems like she wants to get down with this again. This is her thing. I think she liked this almost better than selling drugs. Now, Pope meets this woman at the ministry, and it seems like he takes a liking to her, and they start talking of, like, she... He asks her, asks her, does she live there? And he's like, no. So basically, they start up a little conversation of how they got here. And he wants to know what the place is like. And, you know, basically, he's trying to feel it out and feel out if this is the place for him to be right now. Now, I don't know what this stuff is, but the minister gives him this stuff to drink. And he's kind of reluctant to take it. He's kind of reluctant to take it and he he's standoffish about it. He's asking what it is and he's not telling him what it is. He's telling him it's his sacrament, but he's not telling him what's in the stuff or anything. And I don't know if it's moonshine or anything, but I don't trust this dude. It's probably something with some kind of LSD in it because he seemed like he's kind of like a hippie or whatever. And Pope takes a little bit of it. He takes the glass. He takes a little bit of it, but he doesn't like this. So he, he doesn't like it, so he's like, you know what, I'm going to leave. Now Smurf comes back to the house. She comes back, and she comes inside. And she sees Jake's face. And she wants to know what happened. Julie's scared. Julie's scared, but Pope, he got the name of the dude that beat him up. Told, him, told his mother exactly what he did to him. He kicked him, stepped on his face. He told everything. And, um... 
she's like, we gotta, I gotta get to the bottom of this because this dude was around my kids. So she's not playing. She's 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 looking into it. She's telling Cole that basically, don't worry, mommy's gonna handle this. Everything's gonna be all right. She tells Julie to stop crying. And she now she's mad when she wants to go handle this and, and talk to this dude, Max Cross. Now, we get to back to Pope and that little potion that the minister gave them. To me, it seemed like it's some kind of LSD or something because they all tripping out. And it, it just looks weird to me. It looks weird to me. I don't like the crowd that he's getting involved with and I hope he doesn't stay with them. She's kind of, she's tripping out too. But the one I really had my eye on was, was this dude. This guy here, I don't know, he looked like a fiend, y'all. He, he looked like a fiend. Pope's not feeling this scene, so he's ready to leave. He was getting ready to go to his car, but he's too twisted where he can't even drive right now. So, he go, he, she ends up talking him into going back inside, and he goes back inside. Now we get back to Pamela Johnson. Pamela Johnson and Phoenix meet up with, with Darren. Craig and Jay left. So she's like, well, where's everybody else? He said, the, they're go, they left. And she's like, well, where's the safe? The safe is going too. Darren has something up his sleeve. He wants to make sure that she does everything she says she's going to do because he said, I'm a person of my word, so I want to make sure you're a person of your word. You said that you basically, I want to have everything back in our name so we can have this house. So... That way, you be a person of your word and keep your word, and and I will deliver and give give you the safe. So she's all right with it now, and now it's like they formally meet, and she feels like she tells Darren that I think your mother wanted us to meet so she can so you guys can know that you have somebody to go to if you need anything, and basically this is how their friendship starts out. I want to know in the chat or in the comments, do you think we're going to see more Pamela Johnson? Is she going to be like a mother figure to them? Or is this the last we're going to see of this woman? Or are they going to get together and do any more things? Leave your comments, leave your answers in the chat. I feel like the whole meeting ended on a good note because now I feel like now the crew feels like they're not alone now that even though their mother is gone, I feel like they do have somebody else they kind of can rely on. But she had to put her foot down with them because she, you re, she remembers how their mother was when she was younger. So I think that's why she came in as a force to be reckoned with. Now, Craig and Ren are back at the house, and she tells Craig that basically she likes this, and it seems like she wants to get down more with this. Remember, he already had her set up where he feels like she should be doing real estate or something legal because they have the baby. So, but I want to know if she's going to follow in suit. That's another one of my questions. Leave that in the comments, too. Um, just tell me what you what you guys think. So they she convinces Andrew Pope to go back inside. He goes back in, but one of these dudes is looking at Pope like and telling him he's the devil, he's evil, he's dark, and he's having like a meltdown over it. So, he's ready to go. So, he he's ready to leave this place. Because it just seems like it's weird. And the way Pope is with his anger, he might end up killing this dude. 
That's my opinion. That's how I feel. He might end up killing this dude or beating him up real bad because Pope has anger issues too. So she gets him to leave. She leaves with him. But Pope is still too messed up to drive. So she leaves with him and she drives his truck. I don't know about all this. They don't tell us her name yet. So I don't know if we're going to see this woman again or what. So Jay is at his bowling alley. And the police officer that told him that Pope was in the hospital is his old classmate. So he comes to see him and he tells him basically that the cop that they had on the take is retired now. So basically he trying to tell him, look man, there's a new sheriff in town. If you want your things to go smooth, I'm your guy. But it's not going to be the same amount that it was when you was dealing with Jerry. My price is all going to be a little bit different. So, once again, it's showing that Jay is going to be in charge. He got the cops under his thumb now. So, it looks like to me, everything's leaning towards Jay. And he asked about, he said, Does, do you have a file on my family? And he wants to get the file on his family so he can find out what's going on, what kind of trouble they've been in, and everything. He's 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 basically two steps ahead of his uncles. And to me, he's he needs to be the one that's in charge because he's handling all angles of their operation. He's handling all angles of their operation. He's um handling everything and to me I feel like Smurf groomed him to handle the situ handle everything but she groomed him not knowing how much he hated her because of his mother now Smurf pulls up with Manny and they pull up to come see Max Cross. But Manny wants to go inside with her, but he, she's like, no. I'm going inside because he came to my house and he was around my kids. She's not playing that. So she basically telling Manny she she don't need him to go inside. And he was like, you doing all of this? Is somebody in charge in here? So it's somebody we got to answer to. So you, we got to handle this. But she puts her foot down and she goes inside to talk to Manny Cross. Max Cross. So Max is in his office. She goes inside there. Max Cross is inside his office. Murph comes in there. And they work out a deal, but he wanted some of the cut of the job that they did do without him knowing about it before he came to the house. And she's like, no, basically at this point we even because one of my men took the ass whooping for that. So just don't come to my house again. Don't come to my house again. If you come to my house again, I'm going to kill you. And she, she basically puts her foot down, let her know, even though you a man, I mean business too. And you're not going to come to my house with this nonsense because you coming around my kids and I'm not having it. Anywho, she threatens him. That was the fly part about it. She threatens him and then she leaves. Now, Andrew's still tripping off the LSD with this chick. And... He's still doing crazy stuff to me where I hope he doesn't get picked up again. Because I feel like if he gets picked up again this time, he's going to jail. Especially if it's out of the area real far away from where they live. He 
he's laying in the middle of the street on the double yellow line, yo. He's crazy. But it is what it is. Now, Derek gets back to the house after everything is said and done with Pamela Johnson. And I guess he feels good that the heist went off and everything's over with and they basically got their house back. They're supposed to get everything turned back over in their name. And I think he feels like he he's he's in charge. He feels like he's in charge of all of this. But I feel like they all one person can't run this crew. Every person has their job, and I think that's the only way that this family is gonna be able to continue doing what they're doing. That's how I feel about this whole episode. Overall, I thought it was a good episode. Um, again, once again, this is the last season, so I, I'm just, I just want to know what in turn is gonna happen because there's so much inner fighting going on with all of them. So that's my review of that. Like, comment, comment, share, and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. All right, so that was the review of the episode. I want to know what you guys think. What do you think of the whole dynamics? Who's going to be in charge? Who looks like they're taking control of the whole situation? Who looks like they know what they're doing with everything? And is Smurf going to have any more problems with this dude, Max Cross? All, is this the last of Pamela Johnson we're going to see? Or are they going to form a relationship where they end up doing more things together? leave it in the comments let me know what y'all think and i'll be back for another review soon later